Welcome back. Red tide continues to kill thousands of fish and other marine life off the Gulf Coast of Florida. And as of this week, Pinellas County contractors collected more than 2.5 million pounds of red tide debris. It is pretty bad. Experts say it is the worst bloom that we've had in half a century. But what exactly does that mean? ABC Action News in-depth reporter Stassi Almos explains the meaning behind this new data. Red tide is an annual algal bloom where the overgrowth of Carinia brevis in a body of water produces toxins that kill marine life and can even make it difficult for humans to breathe. This year's bloom started off the Gulf Coast of Southern Florida in December 2020, working its way up to St. Petersburg by April. Today, experts say it's the worst bloom we've seen in 50 years. What's unusual about this bloom is the time of year. It's the summer. We don't typically have red tide smack in the middle of the summer. And in 1971, it was at the similar, similar time of year with a similar severity. And expansive within the bay. Leanne Fluelling is the chair of the state's harmful algal bloom red tide task force, an advisory board created after the 96 bloom brought back together three years ago. There's different ways to measure how bad a bloom is. The severity, the high concentrations, magnitude of the fish kills, etc. but also, you know, how long does it last? How many counties does it affect? The National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration says red tide precedes human life, but chemicals from humans can make it worse. While there's no yearly quantity of fish kill, an FWC chart shows the persistence of red tide at medium levels or higher in the last 100 years. That's the blue, and the trend appears to be growing. A few blooms in the past several decades have lasted several years. 1994 to 97, total of 30 months. 2002 to 2004, 21 months, followed by another 17-month bloom to 2006, and 2017 to 2019, 16 months. So what makes this bloom so bad after only a few months? 2018 was rough. The difference, uh, First of all, the, the start of this thing was on the bay, and um, we didn't have any bay issues, you know, the last time. Six out of the last 10 years, it's made it into the bay, but it doesn't usually get to the upper reaches, and it doesn't usually get to the concentrations that we're seeing now. As of this week, Pinellas County alone collected more than 1,300 tons of dead marine life and other red tide debris. Fluelling says the Piney Point phosphate plant spill could have contributed nutrients to the bloom, but what's really feeding this bloom is the high levels of salt in the water. Karenia brevis is a marine species and it can't tolerate low salinities. We had that long drought over the winter and the spring, and so salinities in the bay are much higher than they normally are or than they should be. 1971, that bloom was preceded by a long drought too. Compared to the 1971 red tide, there is a one thing that we need a lot more of to decrease salinity and control the bloom, and that's rain. In 1971, there are a lot more tropical storms and hurricanes to bring all of that rain. This year, Elsa just wasn't enough. Reporting in Pinellas County, I'm Stassi Olmos, ABC Action News.